Hello and welcome to the Mixtape Show. And on this week's show, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Space Ahead. How are you, fellas? Hey, how are you? How are you, Mark? Great, great. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Let's go back a little bit before we start looking forward um, to what you got coming up. Like, tell us a little bit about how you met, like your origin story, you know, how you got together as a band. It was during COVID, a COVID project as most bands had these days. We've all grown up with the passion of music and we've all been really good friends, but we had always sort of played in other bands or sort of experimented with different sort of styles of music. And just during that time, it just, you know, we're all not doing music the way we wanted to. And we just had this, I don't know, a collaboration together, just being friends and just thinking, let's start this band. Initially, we had a drummer called Ben, who was in our band. He and I played in a band called Joy's. Unfortunately, we we tried to you know work on this this project with Space Ahead, and then Tyson. It took me so many years to convince Tyson to pick up his <laughs> bass again and play, and I'm so glad he did. It's it's been great. And then Jordan, of course, has been playing with us for the last just over a year now. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I reckon 15 years we've known each other, Lindsay. But that's crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, the band going four years strong, maybe four. I don't know. For, for, we didn't play our first show until a couple of years ago, of course, when it was with Ben. And we recorded our first album with Ben as well. But initially we were starting as this ambient noise sort of experiment. But we just gravitated towards those I don't know, rhythmic drums, hard-hitting bass and noisy yeah. guitars and some vocals to fit. Yeah. So you're talking about the albums, your most recent album is the self-titled one, is that right? That is right, yeah. Yeah. Is that the one you just toured, As you just talk about the tour, you toured a few dates around Australia recently? How was that yeah. for you? Correct, um, yeah, that was incredible, yeah. Lots of new friends and just getting to, you know, tour as, as our current unit, I feel like. Australia is beautiful, man. It's it's incredible <laughs> just to go around and see these little music scene pockets throughout all of our cities. Mm-hmm. And it's it's eye opening. Yeah, and they've all yeah. been so welcoming with uh, us coming over. It was way better than we expected. And hey, we came back as a band still. So yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask you because you sort of get together as a band and you play your local town and you know this, this you do the old gig and you rehearse a fair bit and all the rest of it, but. <laughs> there's no test. There's no test like going on tour. So yeah, it's it's good that yeah. it's good that you made it in one piece. Well, yeah, we're but... all snorers, so I think that's the <laughs> only thing. I think we're all in harmony as we were sleeping <laughs> our nights together. <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. And coming up, you're going to be doing some recording in April. Is that right? And split seven inches and one of your own as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're doing one with two, well, two of one of our favourite local bands, Hidden Cycles and Moya Moya. We're going to go up to, I know that you did the interview with Ben from Reinhardt. Yeah. We're going up to his recording studio, or should I say their recording studio, Pink House, to do recording Mm -hmm. up there. And Aiden, the guitarist and lead singer of Hidden Cycles, will be helping us up with that so cool. we're really cool. excited and then hopefully yeah. soon after that we'll be recording the new album yeah right is benny is benny producing that for you those singles or is he just you just using his studios i think we're just using his studio but to be yeah. honest we've been so interested in recording there or you know having yeah. having nikki or ben be part of it so yeah. we're hoping that this is sort of uh, an initial experience for us to do further things there. Okay, let's get into the mixtape tracks in. So track one is your attention grabber, your your one to kick off the mixtape in fine style. What did you pick for that? I'm, I know it is young. What's what's the actual name of the song, Lindsay? We've got the CD here. We came prepared. You came to actual... me like a cancer. <laughs> yes. You have a very long title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and dorm until it blossoms like a rose. There you go. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Lindsay introduced me to this song, but I've suggested it as our attention grabber. Mm. But it's just a, 
it's a pernicious little beast. It's simple mm -hmm. and it and it just crawls into your head and stays there. I listened it's, to it on YouTube and I thought, is the record stuck here? Like, what's going on? Exactly. exactly. It's, it's I was like, just going to say that. I sort of hated it the first time and then didn't hate it as much the second time. And then sort of the third time was apathetic. <laughs> and like every listen through, I'm sort of like, you know what, this rocks. Yeah, 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 no, it's, it's a good attention grabber for sure. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one for the mixtape listeners. But that's I the figured. joy of the mixtape. <laughs> that's the joy that's of the mixtape. Like you've that's you've got it. a track, you've got a track like your track five, Lewis, which couldn't be musically. And then you know, especially with your track six as well. That's why I love the mixtape because there's no set genre. It's just you know whatever you pick, that's what we play on the show. Yeah, well, I don't think I've ever not played a track. Uh, I've had to do a fair bit of. Uh, <laughs> editing for some language because my show goes yeah. out at six the radio show goes out at six so <laughs> i can't have i can't have any swearing i used to be in a late night slot and it didn't matter it could i could throw whatever out <laughs> no one cared but adults, huh? yeah because it was like eight it was like 10 till midnight but now it's now i'm in the six till eight prime time evening slot it's like oh, no nice. no more swearing mate yeah so it's good to be in an <laughs> earlier slot because there's more listeners yeah, but no yeah it comes it comes like we said earlier everything comes with a cost okay track two and I ask you to to pick a song you sing when you're on your own, loud and proud, in the car or the shower. So, which one of you is channeling his inner Iggy? That will be me. I won't lie. I got the Stooges. There we go. I want to yeah. be a dog yeah. by the Stooges. Yeah, it's just an absolute classic song. Three chords. One of the first yeah. songs I ever learned as well on guitar. Yeah, it right. wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. "Spark on the Water," believe it or not. <laughs> um, it's such a great song. It's in the perfect vocal range for, I think, anyone. I love watching him or the Sujas play it live and just seeing the mm -hmm. extension or the sort of mix that they do of a live version. It's just, and so many bands have covered it so mm -hmm. well. It's just a classic song that we all love. I've always found that the guitar in that and musically, that song, it sounds really oh. contemporary. Like, you would never put it as, like, whatever it is, 40 or 50 years old. Like, it's, right. you know, it, it, it sounds so, so fresh. Do you know what I mean? And new. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, it's well before its time, I think, that the, the guitar well, on that. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Beatles were singing about holding your hand and the Ziggy Pop singing about wanting to be used as your sort of pet. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's just such a great sexy dirty song um yeah, that yeah. still holds up yeah fantastic and, and, choice and i love the john kale doing the keys just the one mm -hmm. note throughout the whole entire song we did yeah. a song on our last album called shakes where the second guitar is just playing the same note throughout the whole song and it was sort of inspired by that sort of one mm -hmm. piano key just playing throughout the whole song yeah, that was, it's just, yeah, it's the second time. I just literally, just before we started this chat, I put out the this week's episode with Don Mariani from from Detour of Four, and he he picked Down on the Street, I think, as his as his as his album track. Yeah, as his B side, like a left field obscure choice. Yeah, so and, and I'm surprised in what are we forty. This will be episode forty six, I think. And, and Iggy and the Stooges didn't appear until like 44. I was well surprised. Uh, Bob Dylan's here every other week, but yeah, Iggy and the Stooges. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you can't go right. wrong with Dylan, though. No, you can't, no. Track three, and I asked you to pick your favourite cover version. What did you pick for that? The cover version, we went with Big Black, the model. Mm. Big Black is a huge inspiration to us, just the, the way that band sort of coexisted, not having a drummer and obviously having a drum machine. I mean, we love all the Steve Albini recordings mm. that he's done. I mean, he's done such great, great records, but we just love this version because they make it their own. And initially when I heard the song, I didn't realize it was a cover until, you know, I, I bought the record and you could see in the yeah. liner notes that it's yeah. a cover by this, band called Craftwork and that <laughs> just opened up a whole new world of crowd yeah. rock for me and I've I've been obsessed with crowd rock for 15 years ever since learning Embarrass about that. embarrassingly I remember when that came out I was only like oh, seven no or way. eight years old but I remember it being like on top of the pops um, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. What a um, song. 
Oh, what a tune, yeah. I think they were in Perth recently, Craftwork. Did you see them? They did. Yes, we yeah. were third from the front. I don't know oh, how we nice. saw the tickets, but yeah, it yeah. was incredible. Did you go? Uh, no, I didn't. No, no. I think I had every intention, but it might have been just one of them where, because I'm like i a week on, week off dad, I have to be quite selective on when I spend like babysitters these days. They want 35 an hour. <laughs> oh, far out. Right, so it's four four hours minimum, right, for a gig. This is 140 bucks on top of my gig ticket. I'm like, ah, oh, do you know what? I'd like to, but you know, yeah, like the week just They're gone. Pretty expensive. Yeah, and the week just gone. It was teenage fan club, the streets, Jose Gonzalez, the national. Oh, yeah. I could have been out every night last week. Do you know what I mean? And it would have cost me like an arm and a leg. Babysitter yeah. sitting there going, oh, lovely jubbly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, so yeah, I think it was one of them where I was I was on dad duty that week, and That's yeah, fair. I didn't, I, I couldn't get there, which is. Well, the if first it helps, thing I checked was great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, nice one. Appreciate that. That's that. all right. <laughs> all right. And talking, talking of industrial electrical, track four. And I asked you to pick a song you wish you could play to your 18 year old self. What did you pick mm. for that? All right. That's, that was mine. This one came to me almost instantly. It's Laurie Anderson's Oh Superman. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, had, I just like pictured myself at 18 and there was this uh, skit on SNL called Dear Sister. They were playing an Imogen Heap song and I just thought at that, I, it was what you say, I don't know, very, very cheesy. But <laughs> those sounds and it was, it just infiltrated our brains and I feel like Laurie Anderson kind of uh, was doing that for our entire lives, this album was out by her, Big Science, and mm. we didn't hear it until Lindsay showed us, probably, you know, getting into our late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And it just, yeah, absolutely, like, life-changing for me as an album. Laurie Anderson's sound and the way she mm. uses the vocoder and synthesizers mm. and everything. It's, oh, yeah. She's yeah. Really, oh, she's just incredible. Yeah, she's yeah, a proper her. artist for sure. I think Imogen Heap you mentioned there, I'm pretty sure she's got a song that she uses a very similar vocal effect. At least. Yeah, I yeah. What, I can't remember what it's called now. Hide and Seek is yeah. the song. Hide and Seek, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That yeah. Like, that's a that, tune, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah I love that one. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love, uh, I love yeah. how it's a big, it was like number one in, or number two in like 1981 on like BBC radio. Yeah. 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 And it's a nine minute song. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. don't yeah. usually get, oh, you know, groups of that era sort of doing yeah. nine minute songs with hardly any structure or anything. And it's, it's such an art form, that song. It's, yeah. You can interpret this. I love reading the arguments of what people think that song represents or, is trying to say but oh, there's just good. so many different interpretations of that song and it it's just a great conversation and it's just mm -hmm. with all the birds in the background and the sort of synth and just that yeah it's just beautiful what i like about it is it's so sparse and like musically obviously it's so sparse and vocally even the spoken word parts they're, they're sort of you know quite sparse as well but it really holds your attention. Like you want to listen, like you want to find out like what yeah. what's coming yeah. next, like what's going to be happening next. Like it's just, yeah, it's unreal. Oh. I'm yeah, getting goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic track. Okay. Now this is the one I've been excited to talk to you about. Track five. Oh, I'm excited. Track five. A song you would put on your mixtape to let the listener know you are romantically <laughs> interested. What did you pick? Okay. <laughs> Have you got so, it? Oh, yeah, I've got it. No yeah. <laughs> to you be fair, what? sorry, go on. To be fair, this is my partner's. Right. Okay. I mean, we've been together for six years now, and we put this record on all the time. Funny, funny enough, when we started dating, we actually gave each other mixtapes, mm. and she introduced me to that album, Lewis, and yeah. I just completely fell in love. With the album as well. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, of course. Well, yeah. It's just something else, isn't it? I'm so glad that you, you know, dug it and searched around and tried to uncover the mystery like everyone else. <laughs> Do you know what, though? Do you know what? I was already, I was already subconsciously aware of it, and I'll tell you why. Because last week, 
as I mentioned to you in the messaging, I had Diesel on, right? And his track six was Baby by Donnie and Joe Emerson, right? Which if you're yeah, not familiar, right. right, I'll send you a link, right, for that. And it's it's a it's another light in the attic reissue, right? A very similar story. I think and we might have to. <laughs> yeah. I've just bought it the other day. And oh, beautiful. I, I was watching, obviously, the videos on YouTube a lot. And you know, on YouTube, the suggested videos come up. And that, that's obviously a quite a memorable image, like that album cover. And so when I, I'd sort of already sort of seen it, you know, and out sort of, you know, subconsciously took the image in. So when I clicked the link that you sent for your track five, I was like, I already know this. How do I already know this? And then when I started that's amazing. Looking, and I saw that it was a light in the agri issue, I was like, ah, that's why it's, it's been coming up as a suggested video. And I've subconsciously recognized like that image. It's do iconic. You know much, do you know much about Lewis or the story behind the record or, or anything like that? Tell us a little bit yeah. about that if you know. What I remember is that someone happened to find it in a fleet market as, you know, just getting clearance at a record store. And he saw the cover and thought it might be a country country album. Took it home and was just completely floored just by the sound and the textures and just how, it, just how raw it is. And then he's just been, you know, as record collectors do, sort of reach out with each other and try and find out. I know that they ended up finding some in, inner notes from the photographer who did some of the photos for him. And I think it was an old 1980s punk rock photographer in LA. And all that he remembered was that this guy came from Miami. I think he lost his house in a mudslide or something was part of the stock exchange market and That's was right. yeah 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 was just driving around America like a nomad with mm. supermodels and mm. it just was in Beverly Hills and decided he wanted to record all these songs that he did mm. I think within two days and mm. it's just it's such a magical record because it it captures just how raw and how we love the song because it's it's obviously a beautiful song, but it sort of shows that you don't need to overproduce or overmix something to make it better. Almost mm. that raw sound just adds the character to it. And if anyone hasn't heard heard Lewis like, more, I would definitely recommend it. His voice is almost like he's almost like on the edge of just crying or just breaking down and you can always hear his tears just welting down his face and it's just it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful the kicker as well um nobody knows who he is or where no. he is his royalties <laughs> from the reissues have been held in escrow by light and yag records until one yeah. day he puts his hand up and goes yeah that's me yeah, um, that's it unbelievable story yeah i really need to do a deep dive on on lighting the lighting the egg records because they've only just come up on my radar in the last week or so and the 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 Donnie and Joe Emerson story is is very similar in terms of how it yeah. was unearthed. So a guy found the record. If they're both in like Elvis white wingtip jumpsuits on the front cover, right? These like teenage boys, and the guy bought the record in a junk shop or whatever for for five bucks and and he played it and it was the same guy who unearthed. Not the same guy who unearthed it, but the same guy who who found out more about Lewis was the guy who who dug up the Donnie and Joe Emerson. And oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah. John is he Flesher, I think his name is. He's a music That sounds writer. right. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a music writer. Same guy. He discovered the the he must know Matt who runs Light and Yag Records. I think there must be some connection there. Um and he found the, the Emerson Brothers record in a in a junk shop. Paid five dollars for it in whenever it was two thousand and eight. Took it home and was blown away by it in a very similar way to you know the Lewis story, and started spruiking it on you know Facebook pages and you know websites mm -hmm. and he's writing about it and stuff and and it just grew into this cult thing. And Ariel Pink, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, a sort yeah. of lo-fi American band. They covered Baby by the Emerson Brothers, yeah. and then it and then it got sort of a bit more sort of momentum. And then in 2012. So the Emerson brothers, they put the record out. So the story is, sorry, let me go back a bit. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Yeah, 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 I'm loving it. So the story, the story of the recording is, 
the Emerson brothers grew up in this one horse town outside of Washington on a farm, 750 population in, in the town where they grew up. But all they did all day was drive their dad's tractor around the farm and listen to the radio and listen to music. They're like 12, 13 year old kids. Right. And they were sort of started playing and learning to play and write songs and stuff like that. And their dad sort of took them into whatever the next nearest town was and took them into a recording studio. And they did, they recorded a, a, a two track, like eight, seven inch and sort of inspired by that. They just carried on like writing songs and writing songs and, their dad mortgaged the farm to the hill. And this is like in the seventies. Remember he put a hundred grand into building them a state of the art at oh. the time, like recording studio and bought them all the instruments and everything like mortgaged himself up to the hill back there. Sort of, you know, their talent, they recorded an album called dreaming wild, which is incredible. And they pressed 2000 of them on vinyl and they sold about 10. And that was it because they had no marketing plan, right? He's just, he's just gone. Yeah, we'll yeah. press these ourselves. Right. And then and that's it. There's nothing, no distribution or nothing like that. So he's Sounds like, like my first band. Yeah. He's lost, <laughs> he's lost all his money. The bank have taken like three quarters of the farm. Like Donnie went off and I think he opened up a, a recording studio in the next town. And that was what he did forever. Like, and then his brother Joe carried on working on the farm, you know, forever. Yeah, and then yeah. in, in 2012, like 40 years later, maybe 35 years later, Light in the Attic reached out to him and said, we want to put your album out. And they were like, what album are you talking about? And they said, Dreaming Wild. <laughs> it's amazing. And then, it's yeah, incredible, and then, isn't it? Oh, it's an amazing story. And then to, to cap it off, there's a movie now about their, their life story. Casey Affleck plays Donnie Emerson. Walton Goggins plays Joe Emerson. And Bo Bridges plays their dad. Um, yeah, and- what was that film called again? It's called Dreaming Wild, same as the album. So yeah, and they've just they've just put it out on the streaming platforms. And I was looking when Diesel mentioned it, I looked up what it, what the original press of Dreaming Wild sells for, and it sold for like seven hundred and fifty bucks. Then earlier, I looked at Lamore. What do you reckon the original press of that has sold for maximum in Australian dollars? Oh, that's tough. More or less. I'll say five. It's more, it's more than 750. It's more than 750. Okay. Okay. Well, no way. I was thinking a grand. Two grand. No. Two grand. Yeah. That has sold on this. This is original. Two grand. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's <laughs> Even not. the represses. I think there's a clear a red and a blue repress. <laughs> I was looking at them earlier because I thought I'll, I'll grab one of them. But even the oh, represses go too. like 80, 100 bucks. Yeah. Oh. So I was like, oh, I've got to get that record. But yeah, that's the story. So. I'm so, so glad to, you enjoyed to it. Round out, to round out this little segment of track five, inspired by the Emerson Brothers story and 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 hearing that, that album and watching the movie trailer, I reached out to Donny Emerson on Instagram and said, no. will, you come on, will you come on my radio show and podcast? And he said, yes. He's being a bit cagey about dates and times, but his initial reaction was, yes, I'd love to come on, but it's, it's hey, a bit uh, tricky trying to pin him down to a date and a time. I don't want to be too needy and pushy. No, nah, uh, that's a true musician but, right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like, oh, I can't. <laughs> he's just like, he's done with the with the movie premiere and all that kind of stuff. With the promo for all that's all out of the way. So I thought it'd be a good time. And yeah, and he said yes. And I was like, what What a chat. Man, that is, now, what a score. Now I'm thinking I want to get someone from Light and Yatic Records on as well. Um, cause they're they've, got, they've got an amazing story. What they do for for musicians, you know, how many other Lewis's or Donny and Joe Emerson's are there out there? Do you know what I mean? Um, that's it. Like Rodriguez, that's another. He's another one, like and probably the most sort of well known yeah. of all of those like reissues. Yeah, rest in peace, Rodriguez. Yeah, that's a, he's another one. So I think they do amazing work, and I'd really, I'd really, really like to. You can tell they're in it for the music. Do you know what I mean? You can tell they're just they just buzz off music and bringing it to people. They're not about making loads of money and, you know, in a not similar sort of way, that's what the mixtape's about. And what I liked about Diesel's choice of that track six and your choice of that one as well, that perfectly encompasses what I'm trying to do with the mixtape. Like, just bring unearth like, stuff that's not very well known and put it out there to more people so they can, even if one person reaches out to me and says, mate, I love that. Lewis track, what a tune! Like that job done. I'm happy then. Do you know what I mean? That'll be that'll be amazing. Done. Right, okay. <laughs> We're getting a bit light on time, so I'm going to push on quickly to track six and your B side, something a little bit obscure track. What did you pick for that? 
We picked Drive Like Ju Bullet Train to Vegas. Mm-hmm. The the pick of all these songs on our mixtape was sort of we were thinking, well, if we placed one of our songs on this mixtape, or if someone heard this mixtape, they would understand the sort of music that we're trying to write or have been influenced by. We had to put Lewis in there, but. Drive Like J.U. is such a big influence for us. Mm-hmm. Also the fact that the lead singer from that band and Hot Snakes, Rick Freudberg, unfortunately passed away last year. And we're all sort of still hurting and sore from that, especially knowing that they were in the midst of bringing our new Hot Snakes album out. We'll see what happens. But it's, mm. it's a song that came out between their first... Uh, self-titled album and this is the second one Yank Crime it was a seven inch that came out between those two records and I could be wrong but I I have a feeling if I remember it was a song that came out and just took them to the next level in popularity around the San Diego scene or punk scene they sort of put them on the map with that particular particular song And so when Yank Crime came out, it became quite a big hit for them. Mm. Unfortunately, that was their last album as well that they did together. But it's just a a song that we feel like sort of sums up what we are sort of trying to aim or push for in styles of songwriting, structure. I mean, all the songs that we've had on this mixtape have influenced for that. But this song is probably... Yeah, it's just a close one to us. And and Obscure and B-Side, there is just endless amount of stuff. And we just thought, let's just stick it to something that, wrap it up with something that sort of relates to what we're doing as a band as well. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Space Ahead, Jordan, Lindsay, and <laughs> hey, Tyson. Thanks, Mark. Next time. Mark. Really appreciate your time, fellas. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>